ma'am shall we start Yes, yes, Sonali. Yes, I'm there. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah, we can start. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome all the members of the Academy present in day three of the faculty development program on new age technologies for innovative solutions. Today we have with us NGOC NGO, Academic Alliance Manager at Celonis. She is an Academic Alliance Manager at Celonis and is responsible for the Global Education and Research Cooperation Program at Celonis. She graduated in political science economics and English from the University of Mannheim, Germany, and the University of North Carolina, USC. She joined the Salonis Academic Alliance in September 2019 with the mission to fill the skill gap and rethink education from the ground up in order to create new and innovative ideas on how to solve this urgent challenge. We welcome you, ma'am. She will also be accompanied with her uh, fellow member, Pratikshna Kashman, who is a Junior Academic Alliance Manager at Salonis. Pratiksha Yashwan is a Junior Academic Alliance Manager and she assists in the Global Education and Research Cooperation Program at Salonis. She graduated in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Anna University, India and is currently pursuing international business and engineering from SRH University, Germany. She joined the Celonis Academic Alliance Initiative in June 2021, supporting the team with guest lectures, workshops, and course development in India. Um, so I think we can proceed with this session today. But before proceeding for this session, I would like to make certain announcements for the members who are attending this FDP. Uh, the attendance at the, and the feedback link. Both the links will be shared in the Zoom chat box only. Secondly, uh, towards the end of the session, we will be giving you 15 minutes to fill up the attendance and the feedback form. And after 15 minutes, the link will be disabled. And no calls and messages will be att attended or entertained in this regard. So it's a request to each and every one of you to be attentive. As in when the attendance and the feedback link is shared, you need to fill the same uh, at that time itself. One more thing, our uh, YouTube members, if someone is uh, watching this live on YouTube, we request you to join us on Zoom because the link will be shared on Zoom chat box only. And I think it's important for you to fill the attendance and the feedback too. So it's a request for everyone to adhere to all these guidelines. Uh, thank you so much. I request now uh, Ms. NGOC Engo to start with this session. We will be removing our PPT, ma'am. You can share your presentation. Thank, thanks a lot. We're really happy to be here today. I'm quickly going to share my presentation. Now you should be able to see my full screen. Perfect. So warm welcome from the Salonis Academic Alliance. We're here today to talk about our technology process mining and execution management which is one of the most trending technologies in IT today. And we want to show you how you can turn data into insights and turn those insights into action for every company that is out there. My name is Anne Lo and I'm Academic Alliance Manager. I've been with Salonis within the Academic Alliance team to foster education and innovation through ac ac academia. And I'm here today with my colleague, Pratiksha. Um, so we're really happy to um, give you the enablement and instruction today. And if you have any questions throughout the sessions, please feel free to post them in the chat or to ask after the session. Today's workshop will be divided into five parts. In the first part, we want to give you an introduction into Salonis and what we are doing as well as into the goals of the session. In the second part, 
we are going to introduce the theoretical foundations of process mining to you, as well as show you an overview in our platform and EMS academic edition afterwards. In the fourth part, we are going to speak about all the different kinds of teaching formats that you can use within your classes. And we will show you an overview as well as the next steps on how to get started with the Salonis platform as well as our materials. And before we get started, we would kindly ask all of you to register for free with your academic email address from your university for the Salonis platform as we will be working in the platform in um, the session today as well as for you to gain first insights and knowledge in the software. So we will post the uh, link in the chat. So you will receive a link in the chat right now. And we would ask all of you please to sign up for, for the academic license. It is, um, it is free of charge for all academic users. So for all professors, students, as well as researchers, you are free to use this academic version of our software. Um, it has all the functionalities that our customer um, version also has, but is restricted for academic use only. So please also only use it for your academic purposes, for teaching, for your research, as well as for teaching the students. All right, then you should receive an invitation email after you have signed up. So please also check your mailbox after you sign up and then you should be able to click the link in the, uh, in the mail and be able to access your personal team and start exploring the software. So this is something we do before now. Uh, we will get to the software later on, but just so that you have the software when we start the exercises as well as the demo in the software, we would kindly ask you to sign up now. Okay, so if you have any questions regarding the sign up, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, we will be able to help you with this. All right, then first of all, an introduction into our Salonis Academic Alliance program. So the Salonis Academic Alliance program consists of three pillars. Those are our education program, where we have the aim to empower the next generation of process mining users, which means that the students that are sitting in your classrooms today, they will be the people who will be employed at companies that are using process mining and our technology. So therefore, for, they should also learn about the technology as well as acquire the necessary skills to do so. The second one is to create a vibrant global community where we want to create the biggest process mining network. And with this, it's really a big advantage to be at the forefront of it. So right now we are primarily in Asia Pacific cooperating with Indian institutions. So in, in the other uh, regions, we are really having our first mover status ready. So we have partner universities all over the world with 600 academic partner institutions um, all across North America. Um, across the European region and also, also Asia Pacific. And we really want to connect all the teachers who want to teach these new kinds of technology and bring this into their classes. Uh, we want to connect them so they can exchange, they can share their best practices, share their success stories with teaching process mining. And the third part is our research alliance where we try to foster co-innovation and um, create a faster innovation transfer. So process mining itself is a very academic discipline. So therefore, there's also a lot of um, research going on around it. 
twice a year, there's, there's two big conferences all around process mining, where over a thousand participants, researchers from all over the world, exchange on their latest and most current findings and research all around process mining. So we really want to foster this as well as connect industry and academia because industry can learn a lot from academia and at the same time academia can use the insights from the real world to make their research better. So this is our academic alliance program. And we do this with the big mission to really um, become the biggest global process mining network and to help students to acquire skills as well as the knowledge in this field. With the, in this way, we want to evangelize the technology and bring it into the minds and into the classrooms of all students who will be in the leading positions tomorrow. So I actually want to tell you a story of how Salonis got started. And you can see it all started in 2011. So Salonis is not a very old company. Salonis only existed for 10 years. And it all started with a student project with those three young gentlemen that you see on the right hand side. And those three young gentlemen were students of the Technical University in Munich they were studying computer science and engineering. And back then, they were part of a student club who did a project for a company. This company was the Bavarian Broadcasting, which is like the BBC of Germany. And at the Bavarian Broadcasting, they had the task to improve the process of the IT help desk. The IT help desk basically gets tickets in from employees whenever a laptop is not working, a printer is not working, and they need to fix the problem. This process was going really slow and inefficient at the Bavarian Broadcasting, and they did not know why. So they were hiring this team to really get a transparent insight into the process and show where the problems are. In the first step, the three guys tried typical methods that you would do as a consultant. For example, they would look into the process documentation. However, it did not show them the reality, but only a model, how it could look like, but not how it actually looks like. The second step, they did a survey and a questionnaire with the employees to ask them, do you know what is going wrong here? And the employees, they had their very own opinions, they had a suggestion, but nobody was really knowing why the process was so bad. And then the guys actually stumbled upon the idea that they could use the data that is lying in the information systems of the company to reconstruct how the process was actually conducted and executed. And with this idea, they actually were able to create a solution that was so convincing to the Bavarian Broadcasting that they actually bought this software. And the solution was able to improve the throughput time, so the time from start to end of the process, from average five days before the pro project to less than one day, so to zero days. So a ticket would usually be answered within one day. And this was really the breakthrough where it all started. And um, after this big success at the Bavarian Broadcasting, a lot of referrals followed. And you can see 10 years later, Salonas actually received in their latest funding round in this year, a market evaluation of 11 billion US dollar making Salonas and our technology the most valuable tech company of Europe as well as New York. And you see how powerful this is because process mining can really be applied in every kind of industry. You can see it here in our client base. Our client base consists of tech companies, such as Uber, ServiceNow, Salesforce, 
For example, Uber is using it for their customer service processes. Then we have companies from manufacturing like Siemens or Bosch who are using it for their production processes, um, as well as financial service companies such as Citibank using it for their customer processes in terms of um, when, for example, a new customer opens an account at a bank, um, this is also a process that they are looking into with the help of Salonis and improving all the problems and bottlenecks that occur in this process with the help of Salonis. And today, speaking 2021, so 10 years later, we can see that over half of all Fortune 500 companies are already using process mining. So therefore, we can see how powerful this is because all the big and very successful companies are already using this technology. And all of those companies who are not using it yet, they are lagging behind because they won't be able to have full transparency into their processes and see what is going on with the help of data. And just as those companies also, a lot of consulting companies and tech companies also realize that this technology is very powerful and should be adapted into their business model. So you can see here, this is our Salonis partner landscape. Our partner landscape consists of consulting companies such as the big four, uh, Deloitte, PwC, EY, as well as tech companies such as Genpact, um, Microsoft, Oracle, as well as, of course, IT consultancy such as Tech Mahindra, Infosys, Wipro, Tata Consultancy Services, who all know that this technology is very, very valuable. And they are using Salonis on their own consulting projects as a partner of Salonis, as well as for um, for implementation purposes at their customers. So you see, it's not only the customers who are using Salonis, the software itself, but it's also a lot of um, consultancies, tech companies who are leveraging the power of this software to make their own projects better. So you can see here, we have over 1,500 consultancies registered on our Salonis partner platform with 50,000 Salonis certified professionals. And this actually results in a big problem. Okay, so you might think now, why is this a problem? The problem is that we only have 50,000 Salonis certified professionals, but if we look into the job seekings of those companies and consultancies, just by typing in the vacancies with those companies for process mining, we can actually see that only in India alone, in the month of July, there were over 132,000 job openings searching for process mining experts. And this need cannot be yeah, covered by the 50,000 Salonis um, certified professionals. And therefore, our mission is to really make the students that are sitting in your classroom and have a big interest into new technologies, into cloud companies, into software as a service companies, ready for the job market, give them all the skills they need to be able to work with process mining, to work with the Salonis um, software, and get them ready to get started at one of those companies that you have been seeing. So therefore the big goal behind this enablement would be that you as a college or a university become a Salonis academic partner where we provide you a teacher enablement um, and where we teach you the basic foundations of process mining, as well as to how to find your way around the software. 
um, where you will then take that knowledge into your classroom and organize a lecture about process mining using the Salona slides and the software we provide you with, with for you and your students to a minimum of 100 students. And in order for us to be able to see that you are actually bringing back your knowledge to your students, it would be um, needful that your students register for the academic software with their university email address or if they don't have a university email address with their private one and that the students complete the self-learning certification course um, to become certified as a Salonis data scientist as an analyst level. So we will talk about these requirements later on in the session um, but this is just for you to know where the journey will go to so after you have done that session, you can inform ICT Academy via email about your lecture date and number of participants. And we will confirm your lecture and student registrations in the back end and inform ICT Academy for your school to receive your certificate from ICT Academy to become an exclusive partner of our network. And this is really exclusive because it's only for universities where over 100 students have done a successful certification, where we can be sure if we send our partners like Teda Consultancy Services or Capgemini, who are looking for students to hire to that school to be able to hire from the school. All right, so then as a last part, uh, before I hand over to my colleague Pratiksha, um, I also want your students to understand why they should learn process mining. And here are five reasons why students should learn process mining. First part of it is process mining is experiencing a huge momentum in academia and industry right now. The students would be one of the first students who learn about this because just several years before, process mining never even entered a classroom. Second part would be the broad application and applicability. Process mining can be applied to any industry, as you have seen on our client base, and any organization. So process mining is not only used in the business context, but it can also be used in, for example, healthcare, it can be used in public institutions, because in all of those organizations, we will find processes that need improvement as well. The third part is that Salonis is the current market leader with a share of market of over 90% globally. So therefore, the students would work with Europe's fastest growing tech company and experts in the field and with the newest and most innovative technology that is out there for process mining right now. The fourth part is users. So we can see that more than half of all Fortune 500 companies are using process mining, as well as Salonis consulting partners who are using it are looking for the talents who have technology um, expertise in this. And the fifth part is um, our program provides students with data science certification where they can extend their data science skills by the process perspective, as well as boost their CV and their career with the certifications. Because all of our partners, when they see that the students have a Salonis certificate, they will immediately know, okay, the student knows the uh, skills of Salonis and is and able to work with process mining in our company. All right, then the goals for this session would be that you get to know the Salonis Academic Alliance as well as the EMS technology, that you find your way around the Salonis platforms, learn more about successful teaching formats, and get started and bring your knowledge back into class. So I'm really happy now to hand over to my colleague Pratiksha to give you an example of how the lecture for your classroom could look like. So let's learn about process mining.
Thank you, Anne. Uh, this is great uh, information. So let me go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, I hope uh, you all are able to see my screen. So before we go into what process mining is or um, what the theory of process mining is, let us just deep dive into uh, knowing what has to be done and uh, the basics of that. So did you know that uh, currently there is only 12% of companies from the Fortune 500, which was in 1955? Um, can you give us uh, some kind of input regarding why are there companies uh, which were in the Fortune uh, 500 in the 1955s still not available today? You can give me the input in the chat box so we can uh, discuss on that. So uh, before going into the answering this question, there is another question that I would like to pose to you. Uh, it is that, can you also guess how many different IT system or applications do a company usually use or a global corporation usually use? Uh, for example, like SAP, Workforce, uh, Slack, Zoom, usually every company or a global corporation uses a lot of IT systems and applications to run the company itself. So can you just take a rough guess about how many different IT systems or applications do these companies use? And you can post the on answers in the chat box. Yeah, we are getting some answers regarding uh, the previous question posted regarding why those Fortune 500 companies didn't make it to its today. Yeah, change is what it is required. Like the companies did not up get updated with the changes that is there. They stuck on to their older formats. And currently every company uses like a multiple or n number of IT applications. And usually the guesses which come to us are around 20 to 30 or sometimes even 100. But what is the actual reality of it? You would be shocked to know that. Around every company uses around 508 applications on an average per day or per company. It's like, uh, what do you think would be a problem when there are these many applications that a single company uses? Any guesses over here? Okay, so it's a request to everyone to make this session interactive. Uh, you can yes, post sir. in your questions, your answers to whatever ma'am is asking. Yeah, uh, I have got a response like uh, more than 500 cost. It's more than 500 cost. And uh, they're also asking like, what is their advantage in other platform that currently used today? Oh, sorry. What is their advantage in other platform that currently used today? Okay. Uh, advantage of Salon is over the other platforms. Okay, we will get to that by by the end of the discussion or at the end of the workshop. You will know why Salon is required or in fact why process mining is required at the status today. Because uh, answering that question, uh, before answering that question, you will have to know that. Um, there are 508 applications on an average that a company uses. So when there are so many digital applications that a company is using, it means that a company is setting itself up to fail. The processes are expected to run across a rigid and fragmented technological landscape. Uh, this usually results in a gap between the company's aspiration, that is their goals, business objectives, and what they can actually achieve in reality. That is called the execution gap. That's where process mining comes in. Celonis uses process mining to find a solution to the problems which I have posed before in front of you. So let's dive into what this process mining is that we were talking so long about. How is process mining the solution for the digital process challenges that we were discussing priorly? Before 
going into what process mining is, we have to understand what a process itself is. Process is a collection of related structured activities or tasks in a specific sequence that produces a service or a product. Meaning that when you want to have like a product or a service at, as an end, uh, end result, you need to go with a sequence of steps. Like I need to do step one, step two, step three, step four. At the end, that steps will result to the end product or process. So in this case, for an order to cash process, meaning like when you order something online and when you receive it, that is in the outlook of the customer's perspective. But with respect to the company's perspective, when an order comes in, the order is received, then the company confirms the order. Next, you generate a delivery document, then you send out an invoice, then the goods are shipped, and then the invoice is cleared, meaning the customer has paid. So for the entire process, this is called the order to cash process, which we'll be uh, looking as a demo later on, but this entire order to cash is a process. Every company has multiple process like a P2P process, that is procurement to payment, or accounts receivable, it's a process, accounts payable, it's a process. There are different kinds of process that every company has. And for a company to know well about these process, like how better can these process be? How can I get good insights about my process? Usually, traditionally, what was done to get more insights about this process was first, you look into the data. Like when you create a business, you create like a guidelines or a SOP. When you look into the documentation, you see the process models, and that's how you can also find what the process is about. What was the drawback regarding this was that even though you have already written the guidelines and the statement and the documentation, but that seldom happens in real life. In real life, we do not go, okay, after one, two comes, after two, three comes, but we do not follow that level of processing. What we do is that it is quietly deviated from what is there in the documentation. So this was a feedback, so this wasn't that much accurate, but it was really fast. So what else can be done? So traditionally, interviews were conducted with respect to the people or interview and expert interviews were done with respect to the data that was obtained. This was slow and tedious because you have to go to one another, look into the process, conduct interviews, then take the results from the interviews, give it to consultation and to understand about what process are, about how the process is going and what the data is. The third traditional thing that was done was find and analyze data. Like you use, you use a number of IT systems. How about let's define the KPIs, monitor these KPIs, take the data, anal analyze the data. What the drawback regarding this was, it wasn't fast, but you got a lot of insight regarding this and it wasn't real time. You get the idea about these processes, you get the technology information from these processes after the process usually occurs. Like something happens, you get the results and then you analyze the data. Okay, this is why this happened. This is why that happened. It wasn't real time. That's where process mining came in. It took the real time data. It was efficient. It was transparent, meaning like the process mining software can communicate in real time with all the IT applications, get the gather the data in real time and also produce a visually representation where you can have immediate analysis. You might not understand how it can gather immediate analysis, how it could talk to the data and IT systems. You will be seeing that in a demo in some time. So let's devolve into the technical world of what process mining is. It is not just big data or it is not just model analysis. Process mining is not just specific to data mining. Process mining can be seen as the missing link between data mining and traditional modern driven business process management. To mine a process or to obtain a process, we require process science along with data science. Process mining achieves this union by taking the digital footprints that are created in IT systems and using them to reconstruct and visualize process flows. From here, process mining technology can identify patterns, deviations, and ultimately eliminate bottlenecks. Let's take a deeper look into what is required to reconstruct a process this way. 
Uh, one second, please. I hope you are able to see my screen again. Sorry for the interruption. Yes, ma'am. It yeah. is visible. So to reiterate what I explained before, process mining is a smart big data technology that analyzes and advises you on how to improve your process based on the data generated in your organization and in real time. Process science, process mining lies at the intersection of process science and data science bridging the gap between model-based process analytics and data-centered analytics. It allows users to reconstruct, analyze, and improve business process based on even logs and transactional IT systems. IT systems like we discussed before, like SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, all the IT applications where you can extract data or event log from. By extracting this event log, what you can do, what, why do we have to reconstruct and analyze these things. By doing this, we can improve the undesired process patterns, bottlenecks, compliant issues, which can be detected and reduced also. This also allows you to understand process, actually how they happened with respect to the digital footprint. This also reflects a major advantage to the previous methods of process mapping, modeling, and findings, as these are not no longer assumption-based, but data evidence this reflecting in the real world events as we have discussed before. Later on, we can look into what the digital footprint is and why, how can we construct this using the event logs that is there. The idea of process mining is to discover, monitor and improve real processes. That meaning that we are not going to improve the assumed processes. How are we going to do that? by extracting knowledge from the event logs that are readily available in today's information systems. Process mining includes an automated process discovery. What is process discovery? Extracting process models from an event log. We can also do conformance checking. What is conformance checking? By monitoring a deviation, by comparing a model and log. Usually a company says, okay, this is how the process should look like. By comparing what the model that was given, and what it is actually happening, you can also check the conformance checking. And finally, um, also social network, organizational mining, uh, automated construction of simulation models, model extension, model repair, case prediction, and history-based recommendation. The starting point of process mining is IT system-based work. Regardless of which process or workflow you are dealing with, Independent of the system, the data always contains three important pieces of information. Number one, the information about the process steps or activities that has already been constructed. Number two, information about the points in time which these activities were carried out. And number three, information about the object or ID which the activities have been executed. The combination of all these three information is what forms a digital footprint. Every real world activity, for example, mobility. Uh, let me give you an easy example for you to understand how this is. In your city, there might be a number of smart cycles that are available in our city. So how do we, um, how is this backend that is going to work? First, the information system has data where each and every cycle or the smart cycles is located. And how can you unlock this? It only unlocks only if the authorized user unlocks it with an app. And before unlocking it, it checks whether the user has enough balance for the ride. All of these information leaves a digital footprint using real-time data. Once gathered, process mining technology uses these digital footprints to automatically visualize and reconstruct the actual process flow. So you get a 100% transparent and objective view on how your process actually run, with which you can answer questions like undesired process patterns, bottlenecks, 
compliance issue with real time information that is obtained by doing this reflects a major advantage to previous methods of process mapping and modeling as these findings are no longer based on uh, assume, assumptions but database driven educator uh, evidence reflecting the real world events and i was talking about uh, event logs evolve, how this event logs are extracted from these it systems but here you can see an actual event log for process mining to work correctly there needs to be minimum of three columns these columns are case id activity name and time stamp the starting point of process mining is an event log all process mining te uh, techniques assume that it is possible to sequentially record events such that each event refers to an activity what is an activity a well defined step in some process and it's usually uh, particularly related to some case that is a process instant event logs may store additional information about the events in fact whenever pro possible process mining techniques also use extra information such as a resource uh, who's executing this particular activity the time stamp of the event or data elements recorded within the event here you can see that this is the case id this is the activity name and this is the time stamp these three are minimum required for a process mining uh, this is called an event log and this is required for a process mining to take place and every additional information is beneficial for example the resource or the user who has requested this is over here and also the quantity these are called the other data which also helps you to trace where the data is from and to map the process entirely the three basic types of process mining is explained in terms of input and output the first is process mining discovery discovery takes an event log produces a model without using any prior information the second time is process mining is conformance here an existing process model is compared with the event log of the same processes conformance checking can be used to check if in reality as recorded in the log conforms with the model or vice versa the third type of process mining is enhancement here the idea is to extend or improve an existing process model using the information about how actual process is recorded in some event here you can see how this is exactly happening and when you go to the demo which ann will be showing you next you will be able to understand how the theory which i have explained right now will be put into a practical use for you to look into and you can take over thanks a lot pratiksha for giving the theoretical introduction into process mining so first of all um, i would also like to ask are there any questions so far from the audience anything that was unclear or um, where you still have queries I got a query over here. Uh, what is the connection of process mining in Solanus mining? As I can understand, there is a connection. Oh, uh, they are asking what is the connection of process mining with respect to Solanus? So Solanus is using this technology called process mining in the software execution management system. So the theory which I have explained before the process mining, like how you obtain the data from the it systems or the it systems which is there uh, solanus execution management system uses theory of process mining to extract these data and give a visual representation on how this process exactly is and ann will now show you how process mining the theory which we saw before is used in solanus i think this will be uh, able to answer your question mr richard Uh, right. I, I would like to ask one question. Yes, sure. Yeah, I just want uh, to know that suppose an organization is using an ERP kind of a software for yeah. their businesses, then still they need Salonis for uh, actually, uh, then I can say that Salonis is being used for data analytics. Yes, definitely. Because you see the problem that a lot of companies have 
is they are using multiple systems. They are using ERP systems like Oracle or SAP systems. They are using desktop systems, for example, Excel or Outlook. And throughout all of these systems, there are a lot of information gaps between because some data from the system cannot be transferred into the other system or get lost in the meanwhile, or you have remote files somewhere lying that are not centrally. And this proposes a huge problem, especially to bigger companies, because this makes, this creates silos so that we have a lot of departments that cannot be able to communicate properly together, as well as we will receive a lot of um, this transparency. So tra that the transparency, how the process is actually running and where the problems occur, whether those are in the first step or in the last step or in the middle step cannot be detected. And this proposes a big problem. And a lot of the bigger software companies um, that actually have those ERP systems, CRM systems, supply chain management systems in place, they were really late to the process mining game because um, our, our chief scientist, um, Professor Will van Naas, who was actually a pro, uh, inventing this technology called process mining. He was approaching them 20 years ago to tell them about this idea of process mining. However, they didn't see a need to invest further resources into process mining technology because there was no request from the customers. And now that Salonis and other process mining vendors and software companies have actually um, created this market and created this category, those bigger companies and bigger software companies, they actually see the value of it and also see the big demand from, for example, half of the Fortune 500 companies who are buying into the software. So therefore you see, um, there are a lot of problems that can occur and that cannot be solved by just having a system or buying an ERP system itself. Ma'am, one more question uh, from the participant, like whether image data can be mined? For example, can a person be identified from a crowd? Yes. So this is actually some of the newer research fields that exist in process mining. And for example, a customer of us who um, is Lufthansa, so um, Europe's biggest airline company, and they are actually using Slonus for their ground management. So everything that happens on the ground before the, um, the airplane um, deboards and flies off, um, they have actually analyzed with Salonis. And of course, it's not like a traditional um, process where you type in what you are doing in the ERP system or where you can put in your order. But of course, all the things that happen on the ground below an airplane um, need to be tracked somehow. And what they have been doing is was they were using images or videos actually um, with the help of a smart um, artificial intelligence uh, tracker to be able to, for example, see when which car or when which vehicle is doing which things, for example, Vehicle one is the bus that transports all the passengers from the airport to the airplane. Vehicle two is, for example, the baggage car where all of the luggage and baggage is transported. And in this way, they were actually able to use video footage and image material to reconstruct the process as it was actually happening. Uh, when yeah, ma'am, one more question, uh, like from the audience, like how it is differ with other analytical tools or software? Yes, so this is a very good question. Thanks for the question. So, other analytical tools, for example, simple business intelligence tools, they use data and they can also show us, for example, what is going wrong and um, for example, 
um, where the problems lie, but they cannot really show us the root causes. They can only tell us our on-time delivery rate is not um, ideal, but they cannot really show us what are the causes, what are the root roots for those problems. And this is where process mining with this process perspective can actually show us the relation between a negative outcome or a negative KPI, key performance indicator, and an actual root cause. For example, the problem was that um, a vendor was delivering too late and so on. And I think this can be shown really um, great in our, um, in our demo. So therefore, I would also like all the teachers to now go into to the demo. Um, you should be able to sign up via the link that I have posted in the chat. And in here, I would ask you all to log in and go to the top bar. You see here all the different functionalities that we have, and then go to process analytics. So maybe in the participants list, you can give me a little sign. You can give me a thumbs up or a green tick, whether it's working for you or it's not working for you. So those of you who are trying this out, please either message us in the chat or maybe you can raise your hand if it is working for you. Okay, I see some hands coming up already. So please raise your hand in the chat if it's working for you. Uh, they are writing good in the chat. Perfect. Then um, all of you should be in this process analytics field. And in here, we have provided the students because they don't have their own ERP system and they don't have um, any uh, data. We have provided them with a demo data and demo analysis. And in here, you can see the order to cash process, for example, as one of those demo data sets. And I would ask you to go to the workspace order to cash. And you can see we have two analysis stored in here. And those are um, both the same data, but just in different, um, different um, currencies. So the first one is in Euro and the second one is in US dollars. And now I want you to click on the order to cash demo in English in Euro. So you can just double click on it and then you will be forwarded. Okay, I actually need to log in again. So just give me a minute. In the meanwhile, I hope every one of you has access to it now. Okay, meanwhile, everyone is trying this out. The new attendees who have just joined us, the attendance link and the feedback link will be shared at the end of this session and will remain active for 15 minutes. So you have to fill the feedback and the attendance link, only then you can log out from the meeting. And no links will be shared on WhatsApp and no calls and other messages will be entertained. The YouTube attendees also are requested to join the Zoom uh, session immediately. This is for all the people who have just joined us. Ma'am, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you. So what you can see here is the reconstructed process based on the data of a company that we have extracted from the SAP system of that company. And this is the order to cash process. In this order to cash process, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is the process that covers all the activities regarding um, receiving an order um, until generating a delivery document and shipping the goods to the customers as well as including all the payments that are included with this order. 
And you can see here that we have in total for this company, 988,000 sales order items that have been ordered by customers. Those equal a net order value of 1.25 billion euros. So this is the case for the whole data set that we are working with here, yeah? And Salonis with its algorithm was able to reconstruct all those 988,000 sales order items based on the timestamp, the activities and the case IDs from the activity table. And the outcome is this, what you can see in the middle, it's called the variant explorer. It's a variant explorer because on the right hand side, you can see all the different variants that actually exist for this order to cash process at this company. And you can see there are actually over 495 different variants how a single process, the order process, was conducted within this company. And also a note here, it's actually a real life company. So it's actually a customer of, of us where we just have anonymized and pseudo randomized all the data, but the data itself is from a true, a real life case. And you can see here, the first variant that we see is the most common variant, also called the happy path, because it appears in over 43% of all sales order items. You can also see that it takes from median 11.8 days from start to end of the process. So you can see it here right now. Um, the most common variant starts with receiving an order. Then we confirm the order, generate a delivery document, ship the goods, send the invoice, and then clear the invoice. So if we now look at the second most common variant, we can actually see a difference between variant one and variant two, which is that we have between confirming the order and generating the delivery document, we actually need to, to extend the confirmed delivery date out of some reason that we don't know yet. And this actually has a very negative impact on our, uh, our duration. From 11.8 days, we now need 36 days from start to end of the process. This has a neg negative impact on our customer satisfaction and on our process flow. Let's look into a third variant before we jump into the root cause analysis. And this one, because I have dragged all the three down, shows us that between receiving the order and confirming the order, we actually need to do a credit check first and see whether the customer for the amount that they have been ordering will be able to actually pay for it. And this might seem like an extra step. It takes another four days in comparison to variant one. However, this step might be necessary for some cases, for some customers, who are, for example, not being able to pay it and saves us for, uh, saves us that there will be no payment outages at the end of the process. So now let's focus on process variant two with the extend confirmed delivery date and let's find out where does it come from. So therefore, I am jumping now in my process overview, which I can jump to on the bottom of my screen when I click on the overview button. In this overview button, I see my same process again, but I see more data related to my process data. And this data shows me, for example, um, the sales order items and value by month, it shows me a table where I see all the customers that have been buying. I see materials, I see the sales organization, distribution channels, and so on. So now I can simply filter on the second process variant where I have the extend confirm delivery date by clicking on it and setting filter. I could also just filter for all 
the cases where this activity occurs, you keep the selection. And now you see the screen is changing automatically and the data that is related automatically changes with the process. And I can see, for example, there has been a strong peak in sales order items here in July 2018. Can filter on it again. And then, for example, I can see which customer was the most heavily affected by that and see it's clearly the Queen Industries company that has had over almost 2,000 orders with me in that month. I can also, for example, look into the other data, for example, was it a distribution channel that was not delivering? And I can see that for the month of July, 2018, almost all sales order items that have been distributed were distributed by this V1 Express one. And in the next step, I can actually open my action engine, which is like my action board and actually tell them, hey, please order management team, split up all the orders when you see that it has only been um, distributed to this one channel to the other channels as well, which helps me to keep up with my on-time delivery promise that I give my customers. So what we have just done here by clicking, you see the filters up here, I can delete them again to get to the standard um, look. You can see that, um, you can see that down here, I also have a so-called conformance sheet. And this conformance sheet is actually an automated comparison between my real life process and my um, to be process. And you can see here that I have a process model in here. So those teachers who are um, familiar with um, BPMN notation, you will be very familiar with this, with this process board. And you can see here, this would be my ideal process. And now Salonis is comparing me all of my real life data against this real life process and showing me the results, which are that I have 59% of conformance, which means that 59% of all my orders in the real world are actually um, how they should be according to my process model. However, there are still 411,000 cases who are not conforming, and those go back to 40 violations, which, which I can have a look at now. And those are, for example, the extended confirmed delivery date, orders have been canceled, goods needed to be returned, and so on. So I can now have a look into the violations themselves by clicking on them. And with this, I can actually see the effects on the KPIs this violation has, for example, a longer throughput time. And I can perform a so-called root cause analysis. This root cause analysis actually shows me exactly how big the correlation between a certain factor in my data set and this violation is. So for example, I can see here, there's a high correlation between distribution channel V1, which I have seen before. There's a high correlation between the plants where the products have been produced and so on. So this was to give you a little insight into the software. And now I would be happy to also give you the chance to work in the software for a couple of minutes yourself and solve these questions that we have prepared for you. So we have prepared these three questions for you and would ask you to go now into the software, go into the order to test process and solve these three questions. And after around five minutes, um, we will compare them in the chat with the right solutions, okay?
Okay, I already see some answers coming in. Let's see who has the right answers. So everyone, please, now we will compare the questions. And the first question was asking how many sales order items follow the second process variant? So everyone, please put in your answers in the chat right now. Is it A, is it B, is it C or D? For question number one, how many sales order items follow the second process variant? See a lot of um, answers coming in here. People, please put your answers in the chat for us to compare. And the correct answer is C. So it's 168,000. So now I will show you how we come up with this um, solution. So for this, we are going to the very first sheet, the process sheet, when we go into our order to cash analysis. And then we can simply go on the right hand side to the variant explorer. And the question was um, for the second process variant. And you can see here, it's 168,000. If we hover over it, we can also filter on it. Then we can see it here up in the sales order items region. And the correct answer would therefore be C. Okay, then let's answer the second question. It asks, what's the overall average throughput time in days for the happy path from process start to end? So you remember all the happy path is the most common variant. So the variant that covers most of the cases. And I see here a lot of answers for question number two are opting for B. Also, yeah, a lot of for B. And one of it, um, actually it's, um, Lopa Mudra, who opted for A. And the correct answer is A, 16. Because the question was for the average throughput time and not for the median throughput time. So let's have a look into it. First of all, you go into your analysis and you look into the process variant number one because it's the happy path. And you can see here the duration in median is 11.8 days. The question, however, was on the average throughput time. So therefore, we now need to go into our process and change from median to average. And now we can actually see that it's 12, 13, 16 days. So therefore, the correct answer for question number two is 16 days from start to end on average. And then the third question was asking to display the first 17 variants in the Variant Explorer and show how does the 17th most common variant look like. So put your answers in the chat, A, B, C, or D. So a lot of participants have answered um, answered very similarly here. For example, Meisnam has answered D, and D is the correct solution. So here you can see the correct answers for free. The order is canceled, and afterwards a delivery document is created. Now let's look into the software, how this comes up. So for this, we can simply to the get to the 17th most variant, we can click on more and then click on the 17th variant and display it, how it looks like. And you can simply see 
um, we have received an order, but it got canceled. And afterwards, a delivery document has been generated because there was only one day between the order canceling the order and the delivery document creation. So we can see this is one of the problems or bottlenecks that we have. And normally around 80% um, of our cases that are running through the process are running really fine and according to what we, what we want them to look like. But you can see the 20% that are not according to our process model, they are not really, um, they are showing us all the problems that exist in our company. Yeah, so I hope this little um, exercise was fun for you. And uh, you got an insight into our platform as well as in the modalities, of course, you can explore so much more. The students will have the opportunity to go through a full on online training that is completely online and where they will learn to create such kind of dashboards, data models themselves. So I hope you really saw the purpose and power of process mining. And yeah, now um, I would also like to give you a little um, overview of our academic platform so that you also find your way around our platforms that we offer for you teachers to uh, put into your classroom. So the first one that you saw is our EMS Academic Edition. And you can sign up via the link that you see here, slotus.com slash academic minus sign up. All these links also account for your students. So if you want your students to get access to it, you also send them this link. And you will be able to join your team in if you see the URL academic minus your email address. And the purpose of this is only for academic purposes. Please don't use it for commercial purposes. The terms and conditions don't allow you to use it for commercial purposes. And it has, but at the same time, it has all the functionalities that are in the customer version. Here we offer different demo data sets for the students to learn about this because of course, a lot of students and teachers don't have real life data. You don't probably don't have a real life EMS system, ERP system. So therefore we provide this to you. And the second platform is our training platform, the so-called LMS, so the learning management system. And you can sign up via this link. So no sign up. And the purpose is that this platform should be used for the students and yourself to get training. Because you see the EMS software is very complex and you need a proper training and online guide to guide you through. It is only used in conjunction with the LMS and demo data depends on the training tracks you're enrolled in. In this online training platform, we recommend two things for you. For your students, we want them to go through the Process Mining Fundamentals course, which is a 15 hour certification training for students where they will receive the cert a certificate of being a Salonis analyst afterwards. And for you as educators, we provide you with an educator resource hub where we will provide you with materials for teachers with demo data, case studies, slide decks, and so on. And you can feel free to download these materials from the resource hub and use them in your class. So now if you have further questions or if you're working in a training, if you're working on your slides and have questions, there are also a lot of help resources that we offer you. And those help resources you can find either in the software, when you go on your icon, um, your profile section, you will find this help resources section where we have like a Wikipedia, but for Salonis, and you will find everything in there. Then we have the educator resource hub that you can use, as well as our Salonis community. This Salonis community <clears throat> will be able to answer you all the questions by Salonis um, employees, by 
customers and partners who are using is, as well as by other academics. All right, so now to get back to the steps for the colleges and universities. So now you have actually finished this introduction to process mining and should be able to organize a lecture in your class about process mining using the software as well as giving students access to the self-learning certification course. And here we expect a minimum of 100 students. Our goal for the students is that they learn about this technology on a theoretical aspect, as well as how to use their skills that they learn from the self-learning certification course in a real life environment. And therefore, the self-learning certification course also comes with a case study that the students will be able to use and solve online. If you have given this course to this 100 student, please inform ICT Academy via email about your lecture date and number of participants. And afterwards, you will receive your certificate from ICT Academy. All right, so I also want to give you some insights into the process mining fundamental certification for students. This is a 15 hour certification course for the students to understand the theoretical fundamentals of process mining and how it is applied in industry. The students will learn theoretical foundations of process mining to translate data into actionable insights, to create and refine target oriented analysis, to apply process mining examples from various industries and to realize and sustain business value identified with the loans. So therefore, this training is perfect for all students from the business, uh, from a background of business, computer science and engineering. This includes, for example, informatics, um, as well as all students who have a huge interest in processes. For this course, no technical knowledge is required. So therefore, this can also be teach in second and third year student classes. We recommend it to not teach it in first year um, student classes because most of the students will not have the um, required background knowledge to be able to understand it fully. So we recommend it for second, third, fourth year. And the skills profile that the students will get is they will get better business process knowledge, analytics, as well as insights into our language in our Vertica um, SQL with our own Vertica PQL, which is our process query language. The total course of uh, consists of 15 hours of 11 courses and the students can access via this link. And make sure that the students put in that they are an academic user and put in their university name in full and activate their accounts within 24 hours. This certification training is completely free of charge for all students. And this is an exclusive offer by Sloanus because we really believe in educating students and getting them the skills as well as the knowledge to be able to get better placement opportunities and become yeah, the, the elite of tomorrow using this new technology. So therefore this certification as well as the training is completely free for all students, as well as teachers, of course. <laughs> All right, so I will actually post all the links in the chat for all teachers to be able to also um, get access to it. And I would ask um, you from the organization team maybe to also put it in the chat or in the link for all the participants who are in the YouTube lecture.
So here are all the links that will give you access to what we have just shown. And if there should be any queries, our team is very, very glad to help you all. So you can see we are a global team in the UK, in the German region, in all of Europe, in North America, Spain, Latin, and I'm happy to provide you with all questions, all materials you need. Um, feel free to ask me anytime. And the next steps for you would be to have a look at the slides again. I have posted them in the chat, the link to download the slides, prepare the session, organize the lecture with your students, let the students get access to the software as well as to do the self-learning course and then to become an academic alliance partner and profit from our joint partnership. And in this regard, I actually want to give you a first insight into how a Salonis Academic Alliance Partnership can look like, uh, where you can join our ecosystem summit. Our ecosystem summit is the big summit where all consulting partners like Tata Consultancy Services, Accenture, Capgemini, as well as academic partners will join. It is a big conference conference that will be hosted live from the US and Europe on 21st of September this year. And you can simply sign up by following this link. I've also posted it in the, in the, it in the chat. And um, sign up for it to hear from other teachers and researchers around the world, how they are integrating it into their curriculum, into their classes, to hear from industry experts, how they see the connection between industry and academia, as well as to hear from some selected students, how they actually perceive this training for their personal career opportunities. So I would kindly invite you to join our ecosystem summit this year um, to really get a full on experience and happy to actually see you there. So it will be hosted completely online. And I'm really, really happy to see you all at our ecosystem summit. So with this, we would be at the end of the session and I would really be happy to receive all of your questions and answer them. And if you have any questions to Salonis or whether it's to process mining technology, whether it's to the teaching formats or the procedure, happy to answer all of the questions you have. Well, everyone is requested to post their questions. I think there's one question in the chat. Um, are there any charges to join this conferences? Um, there are no charges to join this conference. The conference is completely open for all people who want to join. Um, but of course, it has some limitations that it's only for our um, academic network as well as our partners. So it's free of charge. Any further questions? I just would like to know that if you uh, we want to make your uh, the center of excellence, I think you're offering something like that. So first of all, 100 students should register and do the certificate, then only we can go for the alliance. Yes, correctly. So this would be the case to become known as academic partner. And if you want to create a center of excellence, so center of excellence would receive even more dedicated resources from our side, then there would even be over 200 students necessary, as well as a dedicated plan on what you want to do together with the Academic Alliance. So for example, some of our partners, they want to create um, a better research cooperation, or they are creating some things like a hackathon or a learnathon for all students across the, across the university. 
or they have a dedicated career program together with us, for example. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there's a question in the chat box, like uh, where the business analyst students can join for the course? Yes, business pros analyst students, I think they are the perfect uh, student group who would be really, really eager to learn about this because it combines both things. It combines new technologies and IT with, of course, process management, which is the ideal pathway for them and will shape their future. Because of course, they won't be working with just models that they can draw in the future anymore, but they will be working on data because data is the oil of our 21st century. And we will only be working with data in the future. So it's the perfect course for them. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what is the conference schedule date they are asking? Yeah, so the conference date is the 21st of September. And it will be primarily in the afternoon and German time. So it will be either, rather in the evening um, Indian, uh, Indian time. So if you go to this website and sign up, you will receive the whole agenda and schedule as well as after the conference, if you were not able to attend also the recording links. Uh, does a science student join? Um, excuse me, can you repeat the question? Yeah, does a science student join? Um, science, what do student. You mean? Uh, science students can join this science. session. Science students. Yeah. Yes, so we would primarily recommend it for computer science as well as engineering students, where it would not be so applicable, would, for example, be um, if it's like biology students or if it's um, going into that direction, like nursing and so on, because there the fit is not too good. But for example, healthcare students or healthcare management students would be perfect because we have a lot of use cases on this. Um, then also production, manufacturing students, um, engineering students, of course, as well as computer science students are very, very well fit of this because of course, in all different kinds of industries, we have processes, right? And those processes need to be optimized in some way. So therefore, it would also make a lot of sense if the students do the course as well. Ma'am, uh, at what time the summit uh, start on 21st September? Yes, so it will start very uh, rather late for you in the evening. So it will start at around um, 8 p.m. Uh, IST time. Because it's uh, really sorry, it's a global conference. And therefore, of course, we need to find like some distribute for also the North America, US um, participants. So therefore, it's, it's late for you and very early for them. Yeah, yeah. You okay. please tell you please tell us the Germany time we can convert because uh, they can add three and a half hours in that time. Yeah. So what is the time? Germany time it is going to start. The German time would be four p.m. Four p.m. So just yeah. all the all the participants can add three and a half hours. So it will be seven thirty p.m. Indian time. Indian yeah. standard time. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of questions actually in the chat. Um, a I just would like I just would like to know about this Selenius solution that it can be applied to any domain or some specific domain or a specific kind of software, specific kind of uh, you can say the format of the software is there in then only you can use because as you know and you have already said that there are different companies, different organizations using different tools, different uh, softwares for different processes in their organization. So how everything can be con um, uh, brought into the Salonese? Uh, yes. so, so this is also to get back to a question as well, that was asked before, what is the big advantage of Salonese against other companies that do it? Salonese has the expertise in data connection, 
That means that we have over 200 different systems from SAP to Oracle to Salesforce to ServiceNow to you name it, that we can connect to our system. And this is something that no company has before because all of those companies, they work and execute separately, right? But they don't have any um, connection to each other. And this is where Solonis is like a third layer on top of all the systems that companies buy and is able to really see the full, full transparency here. Okay. And of course, as you say, there are of course some restrictions. For example, process mining cannot work if there is no data, mm. right? So only if we have data in some kind of format, like an event log, um, like in, in an image or video Excel or Excel, Excel, mm -hmm. then it can work. Okay. So basically the data from different organizations, different processes will be uh, sent to the Salonis system, right? And their analytics will take place. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what kind of analytics we are looking for, how Salonis uh, will be able to understand means it can provide the insight we are looking for. Yes, because, you know, traditional data analytics, it's a lot about looking into big amounts of data mm. and then finding some kinds of correlation, finding statistical um, models. And with process mining, you have the process perspective in this that has never been there before. Mm -hmm. And this process perspective helps you to really bring this into context and take immediate actions on it. And this is something that companies have, have never seen before because it's actually something that they can use to drive business value. So therefore we are also really targeting also business students because they will be in the management positions, they will be in the leadership positions tomorrow and they will be able to use this to leverage their business value in the companies. And this is really, really crucial to distinguish data, uh, process mining from simple data mining, for example. So how can we understand whether it is the, the analysis which is being done by the Salonis is accurate or uh, correct? How can we be sure of the correctness of the, suppose some analysis has been done by the software? So how can yes. we be very sure about that this is the correct analysis and this is going to help us in our business? Yeah. So first of all, whenever we implement the software, we are always working together with the partner. So there will always be a team, for example, a business intelligence team or an IT team at the, part, at the company who will work together with us because they are the process experts. Yeah, that is we are the IT experts and mm -hmm. we want to help them to improve their own process. Of course, this looks really different across all different kinds of companies, but a lot of companies, they have really similar processes. So therefore our expertise can be transferred also to a lot of companies. But if you look, for example, at a big company like BMW, the biggest car manufacturer in Germany, they have mm -hmm. like, over 200,000 employees worldwide. So of course, their systems, their departments, they, they're, they're, it looks really differently. And therefore, of course, we need to be close in touch with those companies to help them. And this is where also our partners come in, like Tata Consultancy Service, Accenture, who also have this process knowledge and can apply it there, right? So means customization will be there. You can get it done according to your requirement. Yes. So in the first years, in the 2011, 2012, there was a lot of customization. I would say only customization. And today we are able, based on the knowledge that we have before, and also from machine learning that we are using and is integrated also in the academic software to be able to um, detect patterns and those patterns we can use again for, for other companies. Okay. Okay, I think um, in the chat, there is also the question to please share the link for the registration of the summit with the emails of the participants. So I'm not sure if this will be doable because I think um, 
So now you just mentioned at the beginning that there will be no WhatsApp or no email sent. But if we have an email list or something that I would be happy to share all of the links also by email. Uh, you, you at least uh, share in the chat so that the participants can uh, take it. Perfect. I just shared it in a chat again. Maybe yes. Sonali, if you could, um, could re forward it. Yeah, we can do it, Mama. We can do it. Thanks. Uh, one more question, ma'am. Can we use a panel data cross section time series data as well as for uh, for real time streaming data for predictive or forecasting analysis? Yes. So this is actually data that is super interesting, also from an academic perspective for predictive process mining. So predictive process mining uses those historical data to actually train a model. And this model can help us to predict with um, the ending of the time, um, the accuracy of a certain thing. For example, if we take our audit to cash process that we just had, we can actually predict on-time delivery for certain products and also take actions immediately if we see this delivery will come too late. We need to take action now because based on the trained model that we have, um, we can see that it will be too late if we don't um, take this action. And therefore, um, we have created a machine learning template and we have packages in the software um, that, for example, other companies have created or that our development team have created that you can also use. So it's free con uh, configured uh, machine learning um, apps as well as we have an integrated Jupyter notebook where you can use Python or R to really do your own regression and do your own um, do your own process mining model, uh, predictive process mining model. And also to also answer the real time streaming data, um, yes, of course, customers it's working because they have an actual ERP system in place, right? But for a lot of academics, um, it's, it's really difficult because you don't have an ERP system that is running in real time, um, except for uh, you are working with the SAP environment. They also have an academic alliance where they have like an environment where you can generate data yourself. But yes, it is possible, but for academics, I guess a little bit dif more difficult to use real time streaming data. Ma'am, this conference is free or paid? They are asking. The conference ecosystem summit is completely free of charge for all academics and partners. No further questions, ma'am, in the chat box. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so, are we coming towards the end of the session now? Yeah, I would like to propose the vote of thanks. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have with us our head of IT department, Dr. Minakshi Narula. Now, I would like to request you, ma'am, to present the vote of thanks for today's uh, session. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. And a very warm welcome to NGOC ANGO and Ms. Pratiksha Yeshwan. And uh, uh, I'm very, very happy to have you uh, in this, our faculty development program. And um, uh, be, I would like to express my deepest gr gratitude towards both of you that you have joined this session from Salonis, Germany and uh, have provided us with the insight of the business process mining. And we have come to know how Salonis software can be used for the improving businesses, uh, business processes. And this is definitely a new thing for all of us to learn because most of uh, the faculties who are doing the data analytics, they are just using machine learning and different uh, you can say algos uh, for doing their data analytics 
तो वी आर नाउ लर्निंग डिफरेंट सॉफ्टवेयर विच आर अवेलेबल इन द इंडस्ट्री एंड बींग यूज बाय द फॉर्चून फाइव हंड्रेड कंपनीज एंड रियली इट इज वेरी गुड फॉर अस टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड लर्न अबाउट दीज सॉफ्टवेयर सो दैट वी कैन मेक अवर स्टूडेंट्स अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ लर्निंग दीज काइंड ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर because these things are not being covered in our curriculum and uh, i am also in the process of uh, changing the um, syllabus for my university for the program which i am handling bca program bachelor in computer application so definitely i will see how we can incorporate anything something related to business process mining which is the need of the industry and uh, that is the main thing actually there is a big gap between academia and the industry uh, industry is going far ahead and academia is little slow in adapting the things and uh, that's why this was the main objective of conducting this fdp that uh, we can learn something beyond our curriculum and syllabus so that we can disseminate all these things to our students so i hope all the participants might have got uh, good insight about the business process mining although yes i know that two hour session is not enough to learn uh, one technology or one software or the anything related to that but yes we can at least we can start and we have got this um, uh, you can say that uh, this particular session will definitely boost uh, the uh, anxiety among the faculties to learn more about business process mining and the selonis software for the purpose so thank you very much all the participants i am really um, uh, i would like to just apologize that now onwards we are not going to send the uh, this attendance link and the feedback link in the whatsapp uh, the reason was that that many of the uh, people are not attending the session but they just get the link in whatsapp and they just try to enter their name and sometimes they are calling in the evening also to the organizing committee members and asking for different things so i have we have decided that we will be providing these uh, because we want only the people who are attending the session should definitely get benefited from that so uh, whatever activities we are uh, carrying out uh, related to the faculty development program will be uh, done in the zoom meeting app itself so all the faculties will give will will give you time also for 15 minutes to just enter your attendance that is more than enough it takes hardly 5 minutes so uh, this the now onwards you will be getting all the activities which are related to the fdp in the uh, zoom chat only yes we will be sharing the link for joining the meeting in the zoom app so uh, thank you very much uh, everyone for joining the session and uh, i hope you all might have learned a lot thank you very much thank you very much for the invitation we're happy to see you all again soon yeah yeah same here actually see the uh, this uh, uh, online mode has some disadvantages and this has some advantages also so if if we would have been conducting this fdp in physical mode we may not have met uh, you actually because it would have been very difficult to call you from germany to take this session to our campus whenever you visit to india uh, we would definitely like to meet and uh, come uh, visit our campus and meet our students uh, whenever it is possible right now so you know most of the things we are doing in online mode so i think in germany also it will be like that only or the colleges the students are going to the colleges yes in germany it's still the same also numbers are increasing again so we are not expecting yeah. the next semester to be in present yeah. but when the situation gets better we would be so yeah, yeah. happy to visit you all yeah, and yeah. get together and in real you're, life you are most welcome you are most welcome whenever you visit to india please Thank come you to very our much. you come to our campus okay Uh, can we have a group photograph, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, Sonali, you can remove the PPT, and we can switch on the camera. Yes, to everyone, please switch on your camera. And meanwhile, you are switching on your camera. The links for attendance and feedback are there in your chat boxes. It's a request to everyone. These links are active only till 4 p.m. according to the Indian Standard Time. 
So it's a request that please fill in the forms before logging out this Zoom session because nothing will be provided in the WhatsApp chats and nothing will be entertained over phone or messages that by the attendance links are not shared. They are there in your chat right now. Please do fill the links. Please uh, switch on your cameras for a quick group, a group photograph. And I would like to thank uh, ma'am and Pratiksha ma'am for a very informative session today. Thank you so much. We will close the meeting at 4 p.m. Uh, all the participants, if they have any query, they can just address that query. They can write their query in the chat and can address the query to the host only so that we can answer your queries related to this FDP or any session or anything else. The participants who have filled the attendance and the feedback can log out from the meeting. This Meeting will remain switched on till 4 p.m. only. Yes. So those who have already entered their attendance, thank you very much. They can log out. Yes. The meeting is over now. Thank you. Thank have a good day. Go. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great uh, session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.
I can see some participants still in the meeting. It's a request to everyone, please fill both the attendance and feedback forms and then log out from the meeting. The links are active till 4 p.m. So is this meeting. Last five minutes to fill the attendance and the feedback. Please hurry up. I can still see some participants and it's a request to everyone to fill in your details in the attendance and the feedback forms, submit the same and log out of this meeting.
Okay, thank you, everyone. We are uh, leaving. We are ending this meeting now. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has filled in their feedback and attendance forms. Thank you so much.